today I'm going to talk to you about content curation. And um, you know, both today and tomorrow, you're going to hear a lot about content marketing. A lot of people are going to talk about how great content marketing is, you know, what it can do for your business. Um, and that's all good and true. But there's one missing piece that you're not, probably not going to hear too much from, from a lot of speakers. And that is that content marketing is hard work. It's, it's a lot of work. You have to create content for a lot of channels. You have to create for social media, for search, for email, for uh, mobile, for all these different channels, and it just grows more and more every day. In fact, uh, in August, we surveyed 400 marketers and asked them about what are their greatest content marketing challenges. And, and here are the results we got. We said that 69% of the people said that they didn't have enough time to do it. And a lot of you might, may find yourselves in the same boat. 66% uh, said it's hard for them to find time or resources to produce original content. 38% um, is, it said it's hard to measure results. 37% said it's, they don't have the staff to do it. They're expected to be publishers. Marketers are the new publishers, but they're not staffed to be a publisher. And keep in mind, people are going to answer more than one of these. So a lot of organizations are facing, facing more than one challenge here. So today I'm going to talk to you about content curation. And this is one strategy uh, towards content marketing. You know, there are a lot of different ways you can do it, but this is one way of doing it that significantly reduces the amount of overhead that, that you have to produce content on a regular basis. Um, so a lot of you may have heard of content curation. There's a lot of uh, buzz about content curation online these days. And there's a lot of definitions as well floating about content curation. Some people say it's aggregation. Other people say it's content farming. And there are a lot of kind of truths and myths about what content curation actually is. And this is one of my favorite definitions of, of what content curation is. Uh, this is by Ro Rohit Bhargava of Ogilvy. And here he says, a content curator is someone who finds, groups, organizes, and shares the best and most relevant content on a specific issue online. And I think a few key parts of this definition is, is that he says it's something that's continual. And we've heard that from other speakers here today. It's something that you have to do day in, day out, over and over again. And that's how you get the trust of, of your readership or audience. Another thing is that it's on a specific topic. So you're not curating content on um, everything under the sun. You are specializing in a specific topic and gaining their trust by becoming that specialist. Content curation, it's uh, derived from real world curators. And in the real world, curators are found in museums. And they're art curators. And if you look at what they do, they basically do this. They go and they find content. So they go and find different masterpieces, different sculptures, different pieces of art from galleries around the world. So a lot of their job is, is going and finding um, content on a specific theme. So they may be building a, a new gallery on a specific topic. Um, the next thing they do is they, then they go and organize that content. So they'll go and they'll find uh, the content. Then they'll organize. So they'll decide how do they want to split up between different rooms in the museum. How do they want to hang the painting? So if you put one on top of the other, does that convey a different meaning than putting them side by side? Um, they decide how to light that content. Um, they decide what the annotations, what the label and narrative that they're building around all this content is. And the third thing they do is they help share that to a broader audience. So they open up to, to a broader audience, a targeted audience that's interested in that topic. And that's how they add value. They're not adding value necessarily by, they're not creating new sculptures, they're not creating new paintings. But they're adding value by bringing together relevant content and sharing it to a broader audience. So what I want to do is talk to you a little bit about how that can translate to the marketing world. And what are some of the lessons we can learn from that? So the benefits of content curation are very similar to the benefits we see from content marketing overall. It can help you with search engine optimization. It can help you generate new leads. It can help with thought leadership. It can help fuel social media programs with content. So it's a lot of the same benefits. But what really differs from other forms of content marketing is the approach and how you go about it. So content curation can really be boiled down to a three-step process. So the first step is finding. The next one is then organizing, and the third piece is sharing that content. So the first part is finding content. And so as a content marketer, what do you do? Uh, you go and you find all the relevant content on a specific topic online. So you go to different industry news publications, to different blogs, to different social media channels. Um, and you go and find the best and most relevant content on a specific topic. 
A lot of people confuse this step with aggregation. And aggregation is more automated process. It's just going out there and collecting things. By definition, that's what aggregation is. But as a curator, it's a very human process. You're going out there and finding content. You can use tools to help you find that content. But at the end of the day, it's a human judgment call to decide what content is most relevant to your audience. And I think that that's really where you can add value as a domain expert. You know your industry. You know your target audience best. And that's how you add value. The next thing is then organizing that content. Um, and this is where you play more of a role like, like a librarian, um, where you go and you have this content. You start building up an archive and a repository over time. You then go and you can categorize the content. You can build a taxonomy around it. You can make it more discoverable. So when people find one piece of content, they're then exposed to other related pieces of content as well. And this is a way of giving new life to your older content. A lot of times, the marketers talk about repurposing content. This, this plays directly into that. How do you resurface up old content that's still relevant in, in, the new, uh, in the new scenario? And the third piece is then to share that content to your target audience. And there's more than one way of sharing it. So you can share it through RSS feed. Some people prefer to read it in RSS reader. You can share it to an email newsletter. You can share it to a topical microsite. You can share it to social media channels. Um, or you can share it through APIs to mobile devices and so forth. And all of us consume content a little differently. Um, when I get up in the morning, first place I go is my inbox. I go to my email. And that's how I consume content, through newsletters. Uh, my wife, I know, first thing she does is she goes to Facebook. And that's how she gets her content in the morning. Other people will uh, open up their, um, you know, their mobile device or computer, go to a home page. They may go to the New York Times. So some people prefer to go to a microsite. Other people may go to RSS uh, Reader. And none of these is a wrong way to get content. It's just that all of us have different preferences for how we want to receive that content. And as a curator, you want to make sure your content is available in all those different channels. And you're giving them choice and control over how they want to consume that content. So some of you may be asking in your heads about, you know, how, how does this tie into fair use and copyright? You're using third party content. You're finding third party content but then using it for your own marketing benefit. So my, my uh, kind of motto that I go by is you know, create content. That's great. Curate content, but never pirate content. You don't want to do that. Um, so what you want to do is share only a piece of the original content. Uh, if, if you've ever written a blog post and someone retweets your blog post, they may copy the, the headline, put a link there. They'll attribute who you are and share it out. That's a great feeling. You know, I get a kick out of that when someone retweets my blog post. But I've had the opposite experience happen. Someone's sharing my content, and what they'll do is they'll take the full blog post, strip out who wrote it, and repurpose it as their own. And both are almost the same thing. They're both unknown people who are taking my content and sharing it to a broader audience. But what makes a real big difference is that one, in one case, they're attributing, they're recognizing who I am, and they're also driving people and traffic back to me. And I think that's a key, uh, key thing that you have to follow if you're going to curate content. Um, I, I really like to follow the Google rule of thumb. Um, that's, you know, if you look at Google search results or Google news, they, they share a small portion of text, a, a snippet, a title, maybe a thumbnail. But at the end of the day, they always drive people back to the original publication. And I think as long as you follow that, um, you're, you'll, you'll be in good shape. So I want to show you a few examples of content curation at work. Um, this is one uh, called CMO.com. Anyone here? Uh, film with CMO.com or, or read it. So a couple of people in the audience here. And few people actually know who runs this site. Um, so this is a, a resource for CMOs. You know, this is the go-to place. And I spoke to the editor of CMO.com, and he actually works for Adobe. If you look all the way in the top right corner, you see the little Adobe logo there. And I think this is a great example of content marketing at work, and e even more so content curation at work. So Adobe, when they, um, you know, when they bought Omniture, they, they had art departments on one side, and then they had analytics on the other side. And uh, they didn't want to sell kind of disjointly to web teams and, and, uh, and, and art departments. So they decided, you know, let's bring this all together. And the CMO is the person who kind of oversees all this. So this is the new persona we want to market to. And uh, so they developed this property, CMO.com, that kind of brings that, that whole brand messaging together. And it's a combination of both curated content, the majority of content on years from third party sources, um, sources like ClickZ, Adweek, uh, paidcontent.org. But then they write original content as well. So a couple times a week, they'll put highlight stories 
that are original content, and they have editorial staff behind this. So this is one way of, of curating content. They did a lot of heavy lifting. They're one of the early movers. They uh, built all the technology themselves. They have a heavy-duty editorial staff to support this. So this is one way of, of going about content curation. Um, this is one of our customers here. This is uh, Vern Global. They're a you know, much smaller company. They're an upstart um, based in Iceland. And they're successfully curating content. And I think this is going to be a growing model of, of curating content, using pre-built tools to help them enable it. So Vern Global, they have built a data center out in Iceland. Um, and you may ask, why would you ever go do that? Um, and uh, the reason is it's a colder climate, so they pay 50% less for server cooling. Um, it's also very well connected to the European seaboard and, and the East Coast. And they use 100% carbon-free renewable energy. They use the geothermal vents uh, in Iceland. So it's a really innovative concept. And what they're trying to do is target the CIOs, CTOs of large companies um, that may relocate some of their server infrastructure out to Iceland. So it's a long sales cycle. Um, it's a new space. And it's a crowded space. There are already a lot of data centers out there. So they need to engage their prospects over a long period of time, day in, day out, and educate them about viable alternatives and green alternatives. So what they did is they opened a publication called Green Data Center News using our, using our technology. And um, this has become the go-to place for the green data center industry. Without this site, if you're a CIO or CTO and want to learn about green data centers, you'll have to go to green publications. And maybe every once in a while, they'll talk about green data centers specifically. Or you have to go to IT publications. And only once in a while, they talk about energy efficient IT. Uh, so what they did is they brought all that content together to a single resource. And this has become the trade publication for their industry. So these, there's their competitors are now asking them, can you feature us on your site? Um, so they've really become that, that place that, that they've always aspired to be. Um, they also share their content through social media channels. So this also powers the, a lot of their social media streams. Um, they have regular daily email newsletters. And a lot of times when I talk to marketers, they, they kind of uh, get shocked when they say, oh, you're, why are your customers sending email every single day? That sounds like a lot of content. People are going to unsubscribe. But the key here is that it's extremely relevant content. And because it's relevant, people want to receive that day in, day out. And lastly, they're creating original content as well. So content curation is not a replacement for creating content. It's, it's just a way to supplement it. So every two days or so, they're writing original blog content. And it just makes them more credible if the New York Times says the same thing that they're saying, and they're curating that content. It just adds more to their message. Um, so the last thing I just want to leave you with is uh, we have a 30-day free trial. So if you want to uh, you know, experience content curation firsthand, um, just write down this URL and, and go there. That directly goes to Quick Start Guide. And um, you can fill that out, fill out what topic you're interested in curating content. We'll get a, a site set up for you, and, and you can start uh, as soon as you're back in your office. So, okay. Thank you very much. Thank you.